Hello and welcome again, listeners, to another lovely episode of a fabulous person that I'm bringing you today. We are talking on the topic of how LinkedIn can help business owners and entrepreneurs achieve their business and professional goals, especially in these disruptive times. So I know that we're going to talk about some really fabulous stuff around LinkedIn today because uh, it's a hot topic this year in particular. And the LinkedIn expert that I'm bringing you today is Lanair Johnston. Welcome, Lanair. Thank you, Sonia. It's just a pleasure to be here. Uh, look, thank you too. Uh, we've had a lovely chat just prior to this, people. So I can tell you that Lanair is a fabulous human being. <laughs> she has got, um, she's a real nice human being, as well as that she's got a lot of expertise that she can share with you. So I highly recommend to ev if you ever want to reach out to Lanair that you're going to be in great hands there. And let me just tell you a little bit about her. So I'm going to put my glasses on. Okay. So Lene Johnston, the word wizard, is ranked New Zealand's number one LinkedIn expert by the Social Media Marketing Institute and among the top 20 in Asia Pacific. She owns the communication business word wizard uh, and is LinkedIn is a LinkedIn educator, trainer, coach, and marketer. A former broadcaster and editor, she believes strongly in the power of LinkedIn to help business professionals achieve their goals. Lynne has just published a book, which we'll be talking about today. It's called Linkability, uh, Four Powerful Strategies to Maximize Your LinkedIn Success. And she lives in the South Island uh, of Dundin, Dundin? Dunedin. Dunedin in uh, New Zealand uh, with her husband and her beautiful large garden. So my one of the places on my bucket list is New Zealand. So maybe next year, Lanair, I might just have to pop in and see you. <laughs> we might indeed. We need to open the borders a bit. Oh, 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 we can come yes, to uh, Australia, but I don't think you can come here yet. No, no, not yet, unfortunately, but I'm looking so, forward no. to that. I really hope that that is happening next year. So I am going to be traveling, I've decided. My, I'm starting to become a bit of an empty nester and I'm thinking I'm going to be a pre-grey nomad and um, possibly hop in that caravan and do what I can't do now. Being in Melbourne, we have had lockdown for a good 10 months and I'm over it. <laughs> I'm not at all surprised. We've been through it ourselves, not twice though, like you have. And it's been a very tough year for everybody. So I think traveling is a great way to blow the cobwebs away. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. And I think that uh, something that's been a, a beautiful outcome because of the COVID has certainly been able to do things like this and reach out and meet lots of people and certainly talking on some very interesting topics like what your topic is so before we get stuck into some tips and strategies in and around that uh, do you want to just uh, give a little bit more context to your uh, what you do for the listeners Sure. Well, I, as you mentioned, ha have been a journalist for most of my life. So it's interesting that today, here we are, the roles are reversed and you're asking me the questions. <laughs> but I, I began as a radio journalist uh, uh, in, in a decade that is quite a while back now, shall we say, and uh, was this country's first private radio station's first female DJ. Does that make Ooh, sense? So yes. That tells you how far back we're talking <laughs> Um, now. And uh, so from there, though, I spent quite a number of years in radio, then I moved into publishing, and as you say, edited magazines. And I've worked in a lot of different industries over my life. And I've been editor of uh, magazines to do with the automotive industry, which is really interesting, uh, for the beauty industry, for automation and technology, uh, and the not for profit area as well. So I've written on a huge variety of topics and then of course LinkedIn came along and I had already uh, set up my own business Word Wizard uh, by that stage which has been running now for please don't tell anybody for nearly two decades <laughs> and so when LinkedIn came along I realized there was a huge opportunity there to be able to have a voice uh, up until then, you were going, if you published online anywhere, it needed to be on your own website uh, or perhaps on other people's blogs. But it was really hard to be heard, if you like, or, or have your um, 
what you'd written seen by people and LinkedIn solved that and I just fell in love. Sonia, I just fell in love with the possibilities of LinkedIn and how it could work for people. Uh, and so I've been in love with uh, LinkedIn ever since, and I'm on it every day. And don't tell anybody I said this either, but I dream about LinkedIn. Oh. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> <laughs> I wake up in the middle of the night with these ideas of things that I need to do for my clients that I might have um, heard about during the day. And you know how your subconscious mulls things over while you're asleep and then you wake up wide awake and suddenly go, I know what I could do. And uh, that's one of the things that uh, I love about the platform. There are many others and we'll discuss those too. Yeah, definitely. It's lovely. You know, it's been very interesting to watch the evolution of LinkedIn too. LinkedIn has slowly evolved. Uh, even Gary V, I think at the beginning of this year, had mentioned other than his recommendation of being Facebook, that LinkedIn is the next big thing. And I have seen a lot of people start to use LinkedIn in a different way. And some of the people that I've also known haven't liked that it's being used more like a Facebook sort of platform. But I think that it's, um, I think that it, it certainly does it's a great way to sort of get rid of all the rubbish that you don't need and to keep it more professional. And I've certainly seen people even in multi-level marketing use it and use it really quite well. It's it's really quite fascinating. It still frustrates me as an actual platform with the fact that people tend to use it as a place to put use it like a resume instead of how to leverage its marketing ability. So please give us some insight into it and how to use it better, please. <laughs> Be my pleasure, Sonia. So two things. First of all, it's really important to have a compelling LinkedIn profile. That's the bedrock of anything that you decide to do on LinkedIn. And if you want to be successful on the platform, you have to have a great um, profile. And that is, as you say, not a CV. Do not upload your CV and, uh, to LinkedIn and expect that to uh, bring you in whatever it is that you might be looking for, because mm. it doesn't work that way. Um, I tend to take a fairly liberal view of LinkedIn in terms of how you can use it. For example, where it says the experience section, people usually list their jobs there. Yes. Well, well, why? Experience isn't just about jobs, is it? It's about skills and it's about knowledge and it's about expertise. And so when I'm working with my clients who are usually business owners and entrepreneurs, I suggest that they move the, away from listing their jobs and they talk about what they can do to help people. What problems do their clients have that they can solve, that they can then write about in that experience section? And people tend to, I think, underestimate the value of really doing that well, because you can talk about your experience in that section under a particular skills, perhaps, but you can also talk about who you've worked for, what you've learned, um, some of the milestones you've achieved, uh, put in testimonials, and you can add media as well, because I think that LinkedIn profiles are becoming much more visual, and you'll have noticed this because you're someone who uses LinkedIn done really well and okay. now that they've got the featured section at the top of your profile where you can have lovely big thumbnail images of videos of uh, your posts and articles of um, what have I said images images links and videos are the three things you can even put gifts I've got a gif on my profile that's moving so that it catches people's eyes when they look at uh, look at my profile you can put testimonials you can do all kinds of creative things with your profile which I think a lot of people don't really get and so they just see it as somewhere to upload their CV and to forget about it but it's not it's a work in progress our lives change what we learn changes so our LinkedIn profile should be changing too and I think if people see it as a mini website that they can create for themselves then they're on the right track to creating a compelling profile Mm, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that because it's, um, yeah, uh, there's so much more that you can actually do with it. And I often look at other people's profiles and I say, oh, gosh, even, even if you were doing it in a very traditional sense, it's still, it's not selling that person and their services. 
whenever, and I often, when I've in the various different types of educational roles that I've held, so I've taught at universities and I've, um, you know, all over the place, I've, I've always been educating and teaching and coaching and, and my own, um, what I do. But I've always saying to people, you never really know where you might be in five or 10 years time. So get yourself ready and always promote yourself. But whenever, even if you're in a job, don't play victim, play victor. Always, always be promoting yourself and be prepared to be promoting yourself and do the very best. Don't just do it half-heartedly because if you're going to do it, I mean, I'm a little bit old school that way, you do it 100%. Otherwise, don't bother doing it. And the thing is that people then go, oh, well, I'm only going to do it because I'm only getting paid yay much or I'm only going to get yay much out of it. Well, hold on, you don't know that. And there's so many times and opportunities where if you're always putting your best foot forward, that's selling yourself. Someone will notice you and will potentially pick you up. And that could even be one of your customers or clients and that they can then, you you can continue to grow that. You can continue to evolve that and be headhunted. Um, when I've been fortunate to be in that situation and know then the leverage. So then on something like your LinkedIn profile, you can see I get a little bit passionate about it. (laughs) Utilize it, do it. If you're going to do it, do it well. (laughs) Absolutely. And I think it's really important um, for people to understand that there are lots of people who will be looking at it because when somebody puts your name into the Google search engine, your LinkedIn profile is going to be among the top results. Right. So you need to be looking as good as possible on your LinkedIn profile because that's where people will go to check you out. And if you want to come across as being credible and knowledgeable and professional, you need a really good LinkedIn profile. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It sounds fabulous. So then I'm going to go through a couple of questions that I've got here. So what are some of the things that uh, can set one LinkedIn profile, uh, get them to stand out apart more from another? So we've, we've covered a little bit of that. Is there something else that you could perhaps add to that mix? Yes. And I think that it's all around presenting your story um, and showing people who you are the about section is really good for that and a lot of people just use it to talk about their work but we are all more than just our work aren't we Sonia and so it's important that we talk about who we are our values the kind of things that get us out of bed uh, in the morning and so that you create a full picture of yourself that when somebody looks at your profile they can identify with and they can go oh there's a nice person I think I want to know a bit more about them because the idea of a good profile is to get somebody to interact with you. You want them to take some kind of action. You want them to follow you, connect with you, send you a message, somehow begin a relationship. And the best way to do that is to start with a good profile that talks about who you are and always do it in the first person. I really dislike coming across a profile that says, that's written, Linnea says, Sonia says she says it should be me and I rather than in the third person because that's much more friendly approachable and I believe the best way to get somebody to respond to you on Mm. LinkedIn that's interesting how about also the other uh, marketing way of you will receive this you will achieve that from being uh, having a relationship with me you 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 instead of I what do you think about that I agree that's absolutely important I think in the about section it's to talk, it's important to talk about yourself but also to talk about what problems you can solve for people yeah. uh, and so you've got your headline for that as well in plenty of places where you can talk about how it is that you can really help other people and I think that that's really important to keep in mind when you're writing any kind of marketing material whether it's your LinkedIn profile or your page on your website you should be putting yourself in the shoes of the people who you want to be your customers what's it like for them what problems have they got how are you going to help them and what keeps them awake at night and what can you do to solve them I think it's really important and a great point for you to have brought up absolutely talk about it from what they uh, are going to get out of it Yes, definitely beautiful. So then who should you be connecting with on LinkedIn? Oh, the $64 million question. (laughs) Right. Um, And I'm going to be a sneaky with my answer too. Uh, It depends. (laughs) It depends on what you want to achieve from LinkedIn. Uh, Now, there are various different strategies. Some people will connect with everybody and anybody who invites them. 
uh, some uh, indiscriminately. Some people will connect with only the people that they know, but uh, they uh, and feel that they can actually recommend, if you like, on LinkedIn. Um, I subscribe to the view that sort of fits between the two, that you want to be connected with people who you think that you can add value to and who can add value to your network. Because my underlying belief about LinkedIn, Sonia, is that it's about giving and sharing. Yep. And if you can do that through your information and your knowledge and your expertise, then you are doing everybody a good service. So what you want to be doing is looking for other people who are givers in their way too, whatever field that they might happen to be in. Because you want to be uh, involved or uh, networked with people who are active on the platform. If you are involved with people or you're connected to people who hardly ever use LinkedIn, then anything else that you might do on the platform, they're not going to see. So you want to make sure that the people you're connected to have a good number of connections, preferably. You always want to connect to someone who's got a profile photo or put that into reverse. You, I don't actually think that not having a profile photo is a good idea. I like to see people a like to know who I'm talking to and connecting with. So having a good profile photo is important um, as well. And so if you know who you're connecting to and you think you can add value to their network and them to yours, then that is the really important thing. But here's the critical thing around all that. Always send a personal message. Don't just click the connect button actually send somebody a message that says, hi, Sonia, uh, I've looked at your profile and I really love X, Y, and Z about you. Um, I work in the field of A, B, and C, and I think that we might be able to share some really good information. Would you like to connect? Give somebody a reason. Your, your invitation is much more likely to be accepted when you give somebody a reason to connect. You know, that's a really, really good, um, a really good uh, tip there because the amount of people that want to connect and send me a connection um, and there's nothing there, there's, there's nothing prior and you click on it and you think, okay, I reckon there, there'd be some sort of synergy there. And even if I have checked them out and then as soon as it comes through, boof, there's this sales thing, you know, <laughs> it's like, are you serious? Yeah. So much the wrong really? thing to do. Yes, it's just so, it's rude. It, yeah. It's bad manners. Bad well, manners. You wouldn't people. do that at a networking event, would you? So yeah. why should you do it on LinkedIn, which is effectively online networking? Um, you're right, it is a rude thing to do. And mm -hmm. so you need to make sure that you're not doing it yourself. And, and I think it's very important that if you are going to send some material to people, that you make it useful, that uh, it's not all about you, uh, it is about them. It's something that might be practical and useful, something um, that's relevant to their industry, instead of just sending sales material because you haven't even established a relationship yet you yeah. don't even know what the person's problem is yes. um so i really think that doing that is a bad bad mistake it's just yeah. wrong <laughs> yes and you know your other thing as far as um a picture i will never connect with someone if they don't have a picture me neither my brother was one of them for a while there. <laughs> <laughs> why would you connect with me Sonia well because I don't know what you look like so. <laughs> I just don't trust people I had to ring him and say mm, his mm -hmm. name mm -hmm. I will never connect with anyone without a profile picture and you're a sales representative <gasps> no mm. really why did he not have a profile picture did he I said I just haven't gotten around to it and I said well mm, how difficult good enough that? It doesn't mm -hmm. take very long. Do it Hold now. Phone out, take it <laughs> Do it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll connect with you. <laughs> Can I just mention one other thing about connections um, that I think might be important, Sonia? Some people like to think that, or do think that uh, having a big number of connections, like thousands and thousands of thousands of people, um, is a really good idea. And I think it's really about the relationship. So you mm. cannot know um, individually was thousands and thousands of no. people but yeah. you need to develop relationships with as many of those people as you possibly can and that takes time and that takes work mm -hmm. and so I think that if you're just going after the numbers you are again doing your, yourself a disservice because when you've connected with somebody you do need to follow up with a message and here's my tip on that one send somebody a voice message and it's very easy to send a video message to now directly from your phone from within LinkedIn and you 
you can just quickly and easily do that and people just love it they respond to those really really well Gosh, that's a good idea. I hadn't even thought about that with LinkedIn. So there you go, because um, we, we, we do it, well, some people do it in uh, Facebook, but yeah, that's great. It's that point of differentiation as far as being in business and to um, whether you're in business for yourself or with someone else, it's still about your point of differentiation and it's always having to be at it to continually be in front of that eight ball or to be a standout so that's a really great tip it also that. opens the door to communication because if you already communicated with somebody it tells them subliminally that you are going to be doing it again and that they are going to hear from you again mm -hmm. even if you don't follow up immediately that you are likely to be direct messaging them or doing something that you have not just connected with them to put a tick in a box you've connected with them because you can see that there is a value there for you for them to you and you to them I think that's yeah. really important yes and because they feel like you're a real human being so certainly with uh, doing that putting a really a bit of an effort into your voice and um, my tip would be that to just add on to that it was for people listening is to really make it sound like you're they're a friend and don't leave it like a boring message no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. They don't have to be long either. And yeah. so about mine's about 20 seconds. And that's all it really needs to um to take is just to set the scene for further engagement with people and to stand out from everybody else. I think it's a really good thing to be doing. I do receive the odd voice message, but I very rarely receive video messages. Uh and I'd quite like to have people to be doing, yeah, video doing more of that. Yeah. Particularly yeah. like young people for whom doing videos is really quick and easy. Yeah. I think that uh, <laughs> Right and I, it. <laughs> I know they're used to it so they should be doing it all the time I think. yes definitely <laughs> definitely so let's talk a little bit about postings what would be some of your tips around postings Right, well, there's been some new research around that just released in the last um, month about what works best when it comes to posts. Um, for a long time, text only posts, so that's no images, no video, nothing else but just the written word, have been the, uh, the leader. So that when you put up a text post, more people will see that than any other kind of post. Now, that's been the case for quite a long time. Now, though, it appears that what is called a document post will perform better. Now that means that you still have to have some text but you add a document and that could be a PDF, could be a slideshow, uh, it could be um, a Word document, all of those things LinkedIn will turn into PDFs anyway. But it could be something that uh, is useful for you, so it might, uh, for, for people to know. So it might be a list of tips for example that you want to, um, to people to know about that will help them uh, in their work. Uh, it could be the slideshow from an interview like this that takes the key points and puts them into a slideshow and then uh, puts that onto a, a post. Now the reason for this is that LinkedIn changed the algorithm, um, the dreaded algorithm, um, not terribly long ago and it added something that's called dwell time which is the amount of time that somebody reads your post or, or spends looking at your content. So obviously the longer somebody is on your content the more dwell time there is the better it's going to perform at least on a kind of all other variables being equal basis uh, and that's one of the reasons I think my document posts are, um, are doing so well so I was very interested to, to mm. hear that uh, as well now uh, what else can I tell you about posting when you're posting videos keep them short how long do you recommend 30 to 40 <clears throat> seconds okay and that's quite good because that fits now um, on, I, doesn't, I don't, don't think, they just introduced stories and videos, I think, on stories are around 20 seconds. So 30, or 40, 30 to 40 seconds is the optimum time. After that, views do tend to uh, drop off on videos. And they need to be uh, uh, filmed in square format. So not uh, landscape or portrait, but just in a square format. And also they need to have captions. Because a lot of people, about half of all people who watch videos, do so with the sound off. Mm, mm. They might be on the train, on the bus, <clears throat> in the office, or just simply um, wearing, uh, not wearing headphones and don't want the noise. And so to, if you want your uh, video to be seen, you need to have captions on it. I hear that. And it's, I just find that just so weird. <laughs> just so weird to, why watch something if you're not listening to it like it's a bit of that I think maybe it's 
uh, I'm old school, obviously. <laughs> but it's like, why are you watching TV without the volume on? Yeah, that's weird too. I agree. <laughs> like, I'm with you. <laughs> I yeah, I don't quite understand it, but yes. um, certainly videos are quite important uh, on LinkedIn, and I think that with the introduction of stories, that's even more the case. So, yeah. um, I, a lot of people ask me too about how often they should publish on LinkedIn. So, I'll um, let me talk about that for a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that you should be publishing consistently. The the LinkedIn has a long tail, Sonia. So the work that you do today may not be um, bear fruit for several months. So you need to be working on it now and getting started. It's a bit like when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago. Well, you can't do that. So the next best time is today. So with posting, you need to show up consistently, but with really good quality. Now, I try to post at least three times a week. But if I haven't got anything useful to say, I I don't do it because people don't want rubbish. They don't want me to be posting about my cat, uh, what I had for lunch or where I'm going on my summer holidays, <laughs> as if. Uh, but <laughs> so this is not Facebook. This is about business. So you need to be providing good quality information that people want to know about. Mm. And so don't post unless you've got something useful to say would be my advice. But certainly mm. if you can do that three times a week, then that's a really um, good thing to be doing. Mm. And also weekends. Mm. Surprisingly, weekends are performing quite well. So mm. also have a think about doing that. You can be slightly more personal in a post on a weekend. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. And and yes, because it's a different sort of mindset that people are in. So why not utilize that? I think that's a really good idea. And another little tip there would be... <clears throat> Something that I found out quite a while ago was uh, when I was looking at uh, uh, creating and, and get, really working on myself as an individual. We're talking probably, gosh, oh, good eight years ago. And because uh, I was doing more contract work then, so I was really sort of promoting myself and, and um, but more so that I was just creating content at that stage. It was sort of a little bit new for me what to do and how to do and I remember walking into this particular place where I was picking up some books and I uh, was doing some contract and you, you, a lot of the times you don't always get people interacting but people are watching and reading and I remember this young man turning around and said oh, I really liked what you wrote yesterday Sonia and I went oh my gosh okay, they're all over the place and I didn't know it. Gee, I really do have to watch myself, don't I? <laughs> Just like, <laughs> that sort of taught me like, yep, people, even if they're not interacting, people are still watching. Yeah, they're called lurkers on LinkedIn, and uh, which is a terrible term really, but um, I, I often find that people will follow you and they will watch what you're writing or, yes, or yes. post. And you've never heard of them and all of a sudden you'll get a call or an interaction from them and they'll say, I've been following you you for two years and now I want to talk yes yeah another example of when should you plant your tree so I think that uh, it's really important to remember that there are a lot of people out there who don't who aren't active on the platform in the sense of interacting with others they might be active on the platform looking at posts and doing that kind of thing or but they're not commenting you don't know who they are they're just there um, but those are really good potential clients because they've seen you over a period of time you've built up a body of work you've built your visibility you've built your credibility with them yes they trust you they are ideal clients yes. because they already know you you don't even have to um, prove yourself to them because they've already seen that you know your stuff that's right or well, they can even be just advocates um I, I also found that earlier this year with one of my summits and i was uh, talking in the the private facebook group about one of the speakers and this that and the other and this lady then put in oh she's fantastic I've been following her and I think it was for about two years I've been following her for about two years and she does this and she does that and she's so good and I said oh isn't that fantastic and I remember sending off a private email to and, and following up on things with each of the speakers and this particular speaker and I said wasn't that lovely that that lady wrote she said yes I have no idea that she was ever following me <laughs> 
<laughs> and, but it's not following in a nice way, isn't it? Really? Following in a nice way. I said, well, she's she's an advocate of yours, even if she's not a client. Well, there you yeah. go. <laughs> it's like, and again, that's what um, LinkedIn's all about. It's a ripple out effect, like a pond, yes. isn't it? Um, yes. Where you might be doing just something, but you affect somebody else who talks about it to somebody else. And all of a sudden, a whole load more people suddenly know about you and your work. And um, I find that happens uh, all the time. Uh, if one person who has a good, strong following mentions my name, and that might be on a podcast or on a blog or on LinkedIn somewhere, then all of a sudden, the, uh, the numbers in my um, LinkedIn messaging inbox inviting me to connect go ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> and it's lovely. And, and generally, too, when people like that invite you, they are people you want to be connected with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Birds of a feather that flock together. They're people that, yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> so then tell me, um, what sets, what do you think sets LinkedIn apart from some of the other social media platforms? Oh, I think that it's because it's social media for business. It's yep. definitely that. And people are on LinkedIn to do business. Uh, they are here to learn. They want to share information. I think that it's a giving sharing platform. It's very benign environment. It's not, uh, people don't troll other people as much. I can't say they don't, it doesn't happen at all, but certainly um, people uh, treat people on LinkedIn very deferentially, respectfully and nicely, which you don't often get, well, you oh, you often don't get on other platforms. And so I think there's certainly that um, about it. Um, it's a great place where you can learn because people are prepared to share. It's a great place to go to learn mm -hmm. things that you want to that will um, help you professionally. Uh, whereas um, I don't tend to, le to learn an awful lot from my Facebook feed. I might laugh quite a bit at my Facebook feed, um, but and I don't tend to laugh on LinkedIn quite so much. So it's a bit more serious, I have to yes. say. But people are on LinkedIn to do business Sonia and so they um, come uh, with their professional faces on right um, yes. and so they show up ready to be their professional selves and I think that that's a big difference from when you're looking at uh, something like Facebook or Twitter where it's recreational and you're there to be entertained mm -hmm. so uh, that, that's mm -hmm. not to say that there aren't some people who entertain really well uh, on LinkedIn because um, there absolutely is uh, one of my connections who's a real estate agent and a singer um, each day on the um, leading up to Christmas last year um, sang a verse from the 12 days of Christmas as a post <laughs> and that was really cool I, every morning that was there in my feed right at the top and I just loved that because that that was entertaining but he stood out it might not have been particularly business oriented but it was Christmas it's a festive yeah. season so you can get away with yes. being a little bit more offbeat I think with those sorts of things um, and I've got another connection who always puts gifts on his posts now I love gifts because they're moving Yes. And they catch yes. your eye. Yes. And he's very, he's become well known for that. And he's got a huge following because he does something that's a wee bit different. Yeah. I love gifts. I love gifts. And yet I always worry that whether, how it will be perceived. <laughs> it's like, but well, I think I that think these days. Yes. It's a yeah. fair concern. Yeah. Well, I think though this day and age, it's starting to become a little bit more uh, acceptable uh, you know it does depend on who your end user is your and the clients and the stakeholders that you are involved in but on the same token it's I, I think it's good that it it's a platform that is allowing people to be a little bit more human <laughs> I agree. absolutely and you know I think I'm probably um this is an exception to my own rule about this really but um the gift that I have on my profile which is in the featured section is of a cat please don't shoot me it's of a cat and it's of a cat putting its head down as if it was going to sleep and the story around that is don't write um, content that bores your listen your listeners or your readers and so I think that if you can uh, relate something like that that is eye-catching to your message then yes. that's fine but it's where it's uh, sort of gratuitously um, unrelated I think that that's where the problem um, comes in mm. but you know there are so many people who do to treat LinkedIn differently and 
and do things in different ways, which is one of the things that I um, love about the platform. And I'm always uh, finding new people who are trying something a wee bit different, uh, standing out in a different way, doing something that I hadn't thought of before, and which makes me go, it, it just gets me really excited, isn't it? It's sad. Um, but I do, I just find it really fascinating because then I can go to myself, okay, well, I wonder whether I can do that for my one of my clients and see how, how that works or on my profile and see how that works. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm constantly experimenting and trying new things because LinkedIn changes all the time. And there've been a raft of new um, features arrive in the last, or just the last few weeks, really. Uh, and so I'm always wanting to try different things and see how they work and what I can do with them and who might be doing them differently from the way that I'm doing using them so that I'm learning at the same time and then I can share that with others. Nicely. So what are the new features that have arrived in the last few weeks? Oh, I knew you would ask. We're going to ask. <laughs> I mean, I've just written a post about this just a couple of weeks ago too. Uh, now, so what are they? You can have an... This is fairly minor, really, but you can put on out of office so that uh, if you're all going to be away, you can leave a message for people to say that you won't be able to respond to um, your to their messages. Um, they've made doing video messages on your phone easier, which we talked about um, earlier. Uh, there have been some changes to, as I said, the algorithm. There's been quite a few different changes around messaging. They've brought in uh, newsletters, which is uh, new. Now that, that's being rolled out. And I don't yet have that, unfortunately. There's a whole new look to LinkedIn. So the uh, big black banner along the top has gone and that's now all white. Uh, and all the boxes that all um, uh, the different sections of your profile and, and LinkedIn itself are in, everything's got nice rounded corners. Now, I, I'm i finding that one a bit tricky, to be honest, uh, because uh, the the lighter look is makes things very hard to see. But uh, I, I understand that going to bring in a dark mode so that you can look at it in a uh, in darker color but uh, my problem with uh, all of that Sonia is this or that, that last piece anyway is that there are things on LinkedIn that do not work properly and that could be fixed and they are doing cosmetic changes yeah. I would like to see some uh, work done for example on messaging because I don't know about your I do know about your inbox actually because I bet yours is the same as mine it's got loads of stuff in it and you can't segment it you can't put it like you yes. can in your outlook you can't put it into different folders um, so that you can always find messages from people you can't um, set it up in a way that makes it easy to be able to locate True. those messages so those are the kind of that's one of the major things that really <laughs> irritates me um, and some of the display aspects along the bottom of the mm. screen really annoy me as well and especially with working I, I also have the sales navigator Yes, and yes. and I just think that the two could be combined nicely and again the whole nice. way that it's yes it would be good wouldn't it? Because it's two different inboxes so it's why? It's completely why? different I know why why can't it just be a nice plug in and that yes you can organize everything I like to be organized and, and have everything yes, and color code nice. and, and all of those sorts of oh, things color sure. coding oh now that'd be nice I like that idea so, so you're in the right uh, circles aren't you to be able to take this information <laughs> forward wouldn't that right? be nice <laughs> 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 no, I, I think even the top, uh, the really top, top, top um, international LinkedIn uh, trainers don't have the ear of LinkedIn like that. It doesn't quite work like that. We must remember that LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft. Yes, that's right. I, I do forget that sometimes, yeah. don't I? Yes. Mm. 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 Shall we well, move on? <laughs> okay, so we need to find someone who's really high up in Microsoft. That's okay. I like a challenge. I'll find them. That's okay. Really? They might be, even be on LinkedIn, Sonia. Well... I could even be a connection to them. Who knows? But I will. I degrees of separation. Actually, I don't think it's six anymore these days. Not oh the goodness, no, 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 definitely no, not. <laughs> <laughs> which is so good. Which is so it fun is. and exciting. Yeah. Um, do you have any tips, perhaps, with the sales navigator for those that? Um, well, I tend to use Sales Navigator in a fairly minimal um, way. A lot of people use it uh, more for sales activities than I do. I use it more for searching. And the reason I have it is because you can find people and you can save searches on them on it a lot more easily. Uh, I do think that it's uh, overpriced for what it is. Yeah. But uh, in my job, I can't afford to be without it. So in terms of Sales 
navigator, I would say the, the question I'm most often asked about it, is it needed? And I would say for most people, probably not. Uh, you and I have it because we work in, in uh, LinkedIn a lot. But if you are just wanting to uh, work at, uh, there are a lot of people, let me just retrace my steps on this. There are a lot of people on LinkedIn who have done very well and have thousands, tens of thousands of followers who do not have a paid pro, um, paid service or, or a paid account. They haven't got premium and they haven't got sales navigator. You can do an awful lot on LinkedIn that is free. So you don't need to have sales navigator. So let's hope LinkedIn's not listening to this. <laughs> but um, it is excellent for you if you are in sales, obviously, hence the yeah. name, um, and you are looking for people and wanting to search for people and keep your searches so that you can find people uh, and do a lot with that. So mm. I do believe that it's really useful for a lot of people, but I think for people who are starting out on LinkedIn or who are wanting to promote themselves and their businesses, generally they do not need a paid account. Mm. Okay, beautiful, nice, nicely rounded up. Thank you. So let's talk about okay, so what's on the horizon for you for the remainder of 2020 and then into 2021? Because I know uh, what's just around the corner for you. So let's yeah. talk about that fabulous little thing All that's right. happening. <laughs> always lovely to be able to talk about my book linkability um, and I uh, wrote the book because I felt that there was a big gap in people's understanding of what to do with LinkedIn once you have a really good profile mm. uh, and there are a lot of people who've written books uh, and lots of material <laughs> about profiles uh, but nobody seemed to have pulled the information together about what you can do with LinkedIn after that how do you market yourself how do you get out there how do you be seen how do you find the right people to connect with and how do you get them to connect with you and build those relationships and so when I sat down to um, to decide I decided I needed to write a book uh, and I wanted to put these thoughts together it all came down to the fact that there were four things that you needed to do and that was to connect with the right people publish really good quality content engage in the right way and to learn how to direct message people which I think is a really fabulous thing despite what we've just said about the messaging um, function um, direct messaging is a really good way to um, to talk to people get to people absolutely um, specifically and directly so this week I have a launch of my book linkability for powerful strategies to maximize your LinkedIn success and I'm really thrilled uh, about that the book's been out now just for a few weeks um, and I'm really uh, a lot of people have made some really nice comments about it so I'm really pleased to be able to uh, get that out there and into the hands Sonia of people who could use it I really want people who uh, want to use LinkedIn well to get their hands on my book and I've got it available um, as a, a printed copy digital and audio book so and it's all available at all the major um, uh, online bookstores as you would uh, expect so that's that's I'm focusing on that for 2020 for the rest of 2020 and then in 2021 I I would like to offer some kind of courses. I think that there's a real market mm -hmm. for people to learn that in a, either a group setting. I haven't kind of finalized how I'm going to make this work yet, but I think people have an appetite for learning. And I want to be able to talk to people semi-individually inside a course there, because even though you've, I've written a book, there's so much more that can be said about LinkedIn and about how you deal with individual specific situations situations on LinkedIn mm. and I do talk about um, that a lot in my book I give um, scenarios and examples of if you've got this kind of business and you want to achieve this then these are the kind of things you need to do but I think that if you talk with somebody one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting you tend to get a lot more out of it mm. and so that's what I'm hoping to do next year is to come up with some courses that people will find really really useful. <laughs> I think that's a fabulous idea. I'm getting all these visuals of everything happening and how it could be and, and the connections that you could have to help with that too. So I know it's going to be a really good thing. If I can visualise it, it's going to happen. So it's, tick, like, tick, tick, really yeah, it's, it's all <laughs> happened. I've had the vision. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just take a snapshot of your brain yes send that to yeah. me then i'll be underway yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the other thing is to, to now verbalize what it was that i just saw oh, <laughs> can you tell i'm an ideas simple. person <laughs> and, um, and, I, and i'd love to be Did able you think to in mind maps 
Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. And I also think in uh, videos rather than pictures. Oh, that's interesting. I wouldn't have thought of that. Yes, that makes sense. And then another person said to me, you know, Sonia, how do you look at uh, past and, 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 and present? Do you think past is behind you and the future is in front of you? And I said, no. Oh, gosh, no. I actually stand back like I'm on a... On a um, on a different sort of platform and my past is over on the left and my future is over on the right and I look at it at afar and I thought that was normal and a lot of people know. No that's interesting do you believe though that uh the, that everything is oh this sounds a bit airy fair and I don't mean it to be this way but um that everything's for a reason so the things that you have done in the past build up to to create what you're doing in the present which then informs what you're going to be doing in the future that's all part of a big I'm not saying a pattern or a plan but that it all fits together somehow. I do believe in that but I think also some of it is uh, for your uh, choice choices as well so mm. what you do with it but predominantly yes uh, as a hundred percent no but predominantly yes I do agree yeah I think it's important to see opportunities and to grab them absolutely them absolutely them. and that's that's where I um, I'm often like and this is why I've been headhunted for a lot of things but the thing is that a lot of the times that uh, when I see things into possibilities and opportunities and to future is often a little bit too far ahead of what the end users are ready for. And this is something, again, I help teach in um, some of the courses I do when it comes to change. Entrepreneurs are really good with this, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that everyone else you work with or serve is ready for it. So is it worthwhile? So then you start looking at blue strategy, blue ocean, red ocean, looking at your strategies as to is it really worthwhile going out and 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 bringing something so new to the pro to the market because it means that you have to educate the marketplace first and then that creates a whole lot of money so it, it, you can see how it becomes a whole lot bigger yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's but, but it's enough. it's you know it's really quite fascinating the opportunities that we do have and I I can really like I said I can see where uh, um, LinkedIn has its point of differentiation, but where it could also go and what it could do. Like I said, I really, maybe I should hunt down these head people and speak in their ears. <laughs> I don't know if you've caught I think you might on, have to line stuff. up behind other people who've got some really um, big ideas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's the problem really because we're the users and we um we're working with it all the time yes. they're just creating it but that's yes. the other thing too is that we can, we're using it in a different way now i think than linkedin right. originally intended and so yeah. it's kind of morphed into something that was really it was just a job site into yes. something that's a completely different together yep. which yes. gives us the opportunities and we're in business at the moment we're, we were looking at the statistics of it prior to this COVID we were looking at the statistics in approximately three years entrepreneurship was quadrupling in approximately five years the business arenas are going to be majorly different and this is just a natural fruition because of uh, the different generations that are coming into the workforce which are twice as big as uh, the baby boomers and also uh, uh, me being an ex uh, uh, we're such a minority and it's just the natural prog progression with that and with technology however because of COVID this has been a catalyst to start it off now so then therefore when we're all looking at well what's going to be ready for us in the next one year two years three years we need our products to be pivoting faster than what we are and we're already pivoting fast and it's not stopping we're going to continue <laughs> so. i think the pace of change has accelerated this year big time big time yeah and technology is right at the forefront of yes. that. Yes. and we're all now used to um having zoom meetings in fact they're much more common yeah. than telephone calls yeah. uh and we're we're just it's just a natural thing for us yeah to do absolutely and yet i was bringing these things in as a prototype where i helped break some industry records i was bringing this in several years ago so you know why am i talking like this on a podcast for all the listeners it's also to help pave ways for opportunities for people 
people to don't get in the way of yourself and look at what could possibly be and it's from connecting with other people that you can create things it's either victim or victor and it's all about empowerment really and to be have guidance from someone like you who's an expert in this thing uh, is just you know it, it's a it's a, a no-brainer really to go out and to purchase your book um, for a start and to get involved in those courses so how can we bring those courses forward Lynn? Oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> well I need to sell a few copies of my book first of all all right, all right, all right, all right. we'll do that first and we'll get Christmas out the way okay. <laughs> and then I'd like to have a bit of a break it's been a full-on year so I think I'll have a bit of a break for the year uh, at the end of the year and then start to head down into um, 2021 um, with some ideas around some courses because I'm project driven I love looking at new things and doing new yes. things um, yeah. Uh, so uh, hopefully setting up some courses mightn't take as long as it took to uh, to write and publish a book, but we'll see how we go. Depends no, it is, a, it is a quicker job. And I do know of quite a few people that uh, would really, really benefit from it for, in entrepreneur space, uh, small business and uh, large businesses. Large businesses are having to, to realign themselves and what they're going to do and medium-sized businesses. So there's quite a few people, I think, at the moment, people just grab a copy of, uh, of uh, Linnea's book and then she has a special offer for you. Do you want to just I talk do. about that? I'm very pleased to be able to um, offer this uh, for your listeners, uh, Sonia. So uh, if you go to uh, my website, and I'll give you the link for that in a minute, uh, and buy a copy of the printed book or printed copy of the book, if you like, I'll send you a free copy of the audio book um, with my own dulcet tones recording it. Uh, so if, uh, if that appeals, I'd be very happy to, uh, to make that available to people. And people can go to my website for that, Sonia, and that's wordwizard.co.nz forward slash prosper. Wordwizard.co.nz forward slash prosper. And I would love to be able to offer that to your listeners. Oh, very, very nice. Because that's that's really lovely to have a, the, an audio that goes along with it. You can constantly listen to it. Uh, everyone does learn in different ways. And certainly by, even if your listeners, if you're someone who is more of a visual person, likes to have the and, and a hard copy book in your hands, however, listening to it in an audio way, it gets into your subconscious mind as well as conscious mind quite differently and vice versa. So I think that they're beautifully um, a nice gift together there too. And as the listeners know that they can find it on the page where I'll have all your details. And so that's at uh, sonyaclark.com forward slash and it will be a linear interview, but go, go to sonyaclark.com where the podcasts are and click on there and find Linair in there. So look, I thank you very much for your time, Linair. Uh, is there any last minute things you might want to say before we sign I on? would love people to follow me on LinkedIn, Sonia, if yes. they listen to uh, your show. Um, I'd <laughs> love them to follow me so that I can give them some more um, assistance. And if they wish to connect, which they are very welcome to do so, if they would like to mention in their personalised message to me that they heard me on your show, then I will absolutely... Um, I'd be delighted to have them as a connection and to be able to send them some useful information that uh, I think will help them with their LinkedIn too. Oh, so thank wonderful. you so much for the opportunity to have this chat today. It's been so much fun. I really don't want it to end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, don't give me that red flag. I love talking. <laughs> <laughs> we can go all afternoon probably oh, totally oh, totally I but certainly talk about linkedin all afternoon oh that that maybe we'll have to do it another time <laughs> maybe we might that would be fantastic i'd yeah. love to do that so <laughs> really like, appreciate it. A bit dry. Yes. <laughs> sorry appreciate it, Sonia. thank you so very much it's just been an absolute pleasure um to chat with you and to uh, and to meet you it's just been lovely thank you and likewise, thank you very, very much for all your pearls of wisdom. And yes, and we will see you another time. Bye for now. Bye-bye.